Hi, and welcome to the moviesbywomen.com podcast channel. I'm Estelle. Let's join Heidi at the Tin Lark Art Gallery in Hollywood. I'm Heidi Martinuzzi, and we're here at the Tin Lark Gallery in Hollywood to talk to director Mary Lambert and to check out her new exhibit called Embeddedisms. I'm Mary Lambert, and uh, my new film, my latest film that I just finished, is a documentary. It's the first documentary that I've ever done. It was incredibly difficult to do, and it's called 14 Women. It's about the 14 women who are our U.S. Senators in the two years, two or three years actually, that I was working on the film, mostly 2005, 2006. Senators are part of the legislative branch. They make the laws. How are you? Hillary Clinton, she, she's going <laughs> to run for president for the 2008 election. How many senators do you think should be women? Half. Half. Yeah. Just like they are on the street, half and half. In January of 1992, there were two women in the U.S. Senate. By January 2006, there were 14. Lots of important things going on in the world. We, the women of the Senate, feel that is what our obligation is. We seek it to make a difference in the lives of other people. And that's why we are here. We're in a fight for a way of life today in this country. Pension reform. Caring for our veterans. Clean air. Clean water. I really can't think of a moment where we're facing so many major issues. If you want to have an impact and you want to change things, then you have to be involved. The fact is, the strong economy is improving Americans' lives. When my sister became a senator, I was naturally there to document it because I'm the family archivist. And then I realized that there were other women in the U.S. Senate. I was just struck by what great women they all were and how they managed their their personal lives. There's a lot of pressure on them. They're deciding really important things. At the time my sister was elected, there were nine. There's now 16. They're actually a presence now for the very first time in, in all of American history. I really do believe that everybody deserves a voice. I made the movie to encourage young women to go into politics, to consider a career in politics or public service by providing them with role models. Women have a different set of social experiences and they're just as valid as the social experiences that men have. And those social experiences need to be a part of the laws that are made in our country. 14 Women chronicles the daily lives of US senators who just happen to be the biggest minority group in US government, women. We challenge the Republican Congress to make energy independence a priority. For a senator from a state that's virtually been devastated, my complete focus needs to be on rebuilding. In every campaign I've ever been in, there's always a point where I'm way down in the polls. And I always believe that people want to see how you are in a crisis. Are you going to give up? Are you going to change your position? Are you going to change who you are? And if it isn't right, I'll stand up and filibuster. I'm not a quitter. I don't quit. There is so much more bipartisanship among the women senators. They get together and cross party lines like we used to here. Women have better social skills most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> it's about that next generation. To help women move up the ladder. Thanks. In Texas, they don't think of me as their woman senator. They think of me as their senator. I'll pave the way for you. All right. I think in your lifetime, you will see a woman president of the United States. I would hope that a lot of young women would think about this challenge now. I like to get things done. I think in the final analysis, other people depend on us to get things done to make their lives easier and to make their darker days lighter. So you would actually still love mom if she lost? <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> now let's get back to our interview with the talented Mary Lambert. The most rewarding aspect it, for me is telling stories with pictures. <laughs> That's what I'd love to do all my life. I, I'm a very visual person and I see tiny stories everywhere. My life's work has been learning to, to tell bigger stories, cohesive stories that other people can understand and to share the stories with other people. I think I got the job for, for Pet Cemetery because of Stephen King. I was sent to meet with him in New York and we just got along really well. And I think he could tell that I really understood the story in a way that I was going to tell the story and not just make it into a, a horror movie. So I think he just sensed that and he gave me the imprimatur and, and, I, um, and I got the job. I, I wish um, he'd been around on some of those other projects. What are you going to do with it? Put him in the garage, I guess. I'll bury him in the morning. You gonna tell Ali? Well, I'll have to mull that over for a while. Maybe when they call, I'll just tell her I haven't seen the damn cat around, you know? I don't want to spoil her holiday and Rachel's. Maybe there's a better way. There's a lot of things that make narrative filmmaking appealing. And I really love working with actors and the control that you have over telling your story when you can give someone a script and light the way you want it lit and ask them to repeat it if it's not right. <laughs> At a certain point I realized that I wanted to make a documentary and that I had to commit to it. A lot of the tools that you have as a director on a narrative film to tell the story in the way that you want to tell it. You don't have when you're doing a documentary. You know, you have to catch the action as it happens. You, oftentimes you don't know what's going to happen next. Sometimes you can get people to repeat things, but U.S. Senators do not like take two and take three, let me tell you. <laughs> it's a very difficult job. There's a lot of fundraising that has to be involved along the way. When you think of a campaign on top of your job, on top of your family, on top of your friends, if you're the type of person that just needs to have one focus, don't do this work, because it's never that clean. Why don't you turn the GameCube off and practice your piano for a little while, okay? We had a really hard time raising the money because uh, women, politicians, are not as newsworthy as men, and I was told that. I think it's a cop-out to say my career would have been better if I hadn't been a woman. I resent using it as an excuse, but at the same time, it's a fact. There have been a lot of movies that I really thought I should have gotten, that I was better qualified than the man that eventually got the job, especially in the horror field. My advice would be look to your contemporaries, look to the women around you. There's power, you know, in, in sticking together. There's power in, um, in, in numbers. And we should be helpful to each other. We should be supportive. Be supportive of your buddies. Look to them, you know. Now let's take a look at the latest DVD releases that MoviesByWomen.com wants you to know about. How do you solve a mystery? Was the door unlocked, Leslie? Was it? This is important. When no one believes you. You just scared me. The front door was unlocked. How do you protect yourself when you don't know what's after you? Who closed the attic stairs? The threat is real. Em, what is it, Em? What do you see? Don't go outside. Frankie, don't go out there. Leave me alone. Let's go outside. Don't go upstairs. I'm not going up there. And don't go into the attic. Thanks for watching our interview with director Mary Lambert on the MoviesByWomen.com podcast channel. To show your support for women directors in Hollywood, why not join our First Weekenders group newsletter to keep up to date on all the theatrical releases you need to know about. Buy a ticket to a movie directed by a woman. Show Hollywood that their movies make money too. I'm Estelle. Thanks for watching MoviesByWomen.com podcast channel. See you next time.